Hello, my name is Gustavo Troncoso, and I'm here mainly to show you some of my personal site and some of the business things that I've done. Two reasons. The first reason is I'm out there giving you advice and trying to help you get out of this crisis. I want you to make sure that I did that before, way, way before I sat here and wanted to educate you. The second thing is I've had some people and companies call me, and I have contacted some companies too, and I would like to help. I'd like to go farther than what I'm doing now. The first thing I tell people all the time is find out what you're good at. What is your gift? What is it that God put in you that makes you different from everybody else? Once you find what makes you different and what really, really motivates you to go out and do it, then the second thing is a plan. You need a plan to go out there and beat the world. Now, you have to make a choice because most everybody do not work on what they like. Most everybody has to go to work because they need to get paid. They need to survive, they need to pay mortgage, they need to pay schools, they need to pay their bills, and that's why they go to work. Well, I was one of the lucky ones who went out of work in what I really liked, I really enjoyed. Early in life, I had to make some tough decisions, and the decisions was, what am I going to follow? Am I going to follow what I really like, or am I going to follow money? You see, I really wanted to be a doctor. I like to help people, so I really wanted to be a doctor. And I also wanted to be a businessman. I had a great example, my grandfather, we come from a 200-year-old Italian family. My grandfather was a great negotiator. So when I was about to make my decision, I thought, let me look around. Let me see what people around me have done and how far have they gone. I've always seen my father, beautiful homes, beautiful everything around him. I saw my, fa my grandfather as a hard worker. I also looked around and saw my cousin, who was a doctor. He was in eighth year of medical school. He had not a single penny to his name. And I thought... Well, I like being a doctor, but I like money more. So I made a decision to go into the business world because of my grandfather. So I went into the business world and I really enjoyed it. I spent seven years working, trying a lot of things, opening my own companies, failing and succeeding in many of them, but gaining all the experience that I needed to go and become a CEO, as everybody wants to become. These days, everybody is a CEO, but there's very little working CEOs. So I made a decision to go into business and started building my own businesses. I built and sold, built and sold. Finally, in 1990, I decided to go multinational, international. I wanted to go big, I wanted to go out there, and I wanted to succeed. I always knew I wanted to go international. I never knew how hard it was, and I never knew how much it cost, and I never knew how much time of my own time I had to devote and forget basically everything else to go compete in an international world. All I knew is I was motivated, I wanted to go out, I had some experience, a lot more than most everybody else around me, because I've risked a lot more than everybody else around me. I know I was capable, I had all the desire to go out and do it, I had no fear, and I knew that if I went out there, I was going to succeed. That is the way I think. Even though I didn't know God at that time, and even though I had no anybody else, absolutely nobody else to support me, I went ahead and did it. Now, I spent the next six years in Boca Raton, Florida, trying very hard to get ahead. It was, there was a lot of investment on my part. It was financed by me 100%. There was a lot of time put into it in my part also. And also, I faced failure and success at the same time at a very accelerated rate. But I was willing to do it, and I went just right into it. By 1996, I have already become international. And I was asking God, because I never knew God. I was asking God, is this the right way to go? Am I going the right way? Because it's painful. It makes me money, but it's extremely painful to get there. God answered my call, even though I didn't know him before. And from that day on, my life completely changed. It's not been easier. It's just been different, very, very different. I'll tell you a little story. I met God, and God spoke to me, and I run to my mother. And I said, Mom, 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 I've heard the voice of God. You know, being an Italian Catholic, Roman Catholic family, this was absolutely crazy. You know, first thing they said is, I mean, they're going to take all your money away. The second thing they said is, you're never going to make it on that side. And the third thing they say is, we're happy for you, but this is not going to last. For the next 10 years, and I want to say this is very personal, but I'm going to say it anyway. For the next 10 years, every time we met, every time we had a family dinner, every time we met for a weekend, I remember, you know, and this is hard to say, but I remember my mom making fun of me. My mom used to say, 
oh, you know, she used to hit a glass like Italians do and hit a glass. You know, let's see what my son has brought from God today. He said, let's see what God has spoken to my son today. And they laughed and, you know, and they made fun of it. And I said, well, you know, that's a, if that's a price I have to pay, well, that's a price I'll pay because I feel good. This harassment, and believe me, I don't want to sue my mother, but this harassment went ahead for 10 years. I put up with it, you know, it became normal. But then one day, listen to this, one day something great happened. We were sitting down in one of those dinners and my mom lifted that glass again and hit it and said, listen, I, I want to say something today. And I'm going to try and say it with a straight face. My mom said, you know, I've been mocking my son for the past 10 years. We've been all laughing about what he's taught us about God, about what he said he's done, what he said he's heard. And, you know, we've been making fun of my son for the past 10 years. And then she said, but today I want to apologize. I want to apologize because God spoke to me last night. It was very potent. It was very amazing to hear my mom say so, those words. She publicly apologized. And from that day on, their life also changed completely and absolutely. I have never heard my mom apologize because she basically has never done anything wrong. But she apologized. She said, you know, I've been laughing and I've been mocking. Last night, God spoke to me. What she didn't know is that behind the curtains, I was asking God, the same way he spoke to me, speak to my mother. Change her heart the way you changed mine. Tell my mother that you're up there, that you exist, and that you're the ruler of this world. And everything happened because of you. Well, 10 years later, he did. He spoke to my mother. I heard my mother apologize for the first time in her life. She's never apologized again because she's never done anything wrong. So faith is a pretty important component of your success. I just want to make that very, very clear. So sorry, folks, if I got a little emotional, but it, it is a very important spot in my life. It's a very important time in my life. And God was merciful enough to listen to me. So I'm not going to make it boring. I just want to tell you that I became a CEO back in 1990, and I've been a CEO ever since. One of the reasons that I enjoyed it so much is that I like business to begin with. I might have been a doctor. Yes, I love being a doctor too. But then I chose a different path. And a couple of decades afterwards, I'm here. I'm still doing it. I still like it. I love to share my experiences with you. I like you to check my companies and what I did and make sure, again, that whoever's educating you has something important to say because he did it. There's a lot of people out there telling you what to do. Choose wisely before you make a decision. It's a very important in life. You choose the right path. You know, there's an old proverb out there that says, if one blind man guides another blind man, they'll both go into a hole. So just make sure that whoever's trying to help you and give you solutions have gone through the same thing you got through and succeeded. Now, I'll try and answer some of the questions of companies and people have asked me lately. And here's the first one. Tell me a little bit about yourself. I'll tell you about myself. It's very simple. Since I was 12 years old and all the way to a, uh, probably when I was 18, my father used to come into my room and he used to ask me if I was comfortable. He used to ask me, do you like your bed? Do you like the ceiling? Do you like the paint? Do you like the paintings in the wall? Do you like your covers? And I obviously said, yes, we live very comfortably. And I says, yes, dad, I really like it and it's very nice. So through all puberty, I had a dad to make sure that I knew that everything in that house belongs to him. And that when I was 18, I had to get out and do my own stuff. He's given me enough. Now it's time for me to go out there and make my own stuff, my own success, my own life. You see, now I understand what my father did. My father created the motivation I needed to go out there and beat the world. He wanted me to go out there fiercely and face the world and succeed. And that's why he did it. He told me many, many years afterwards, though. So this motivation my father planted in myself lasted long enough so that I went ahead and opened my business and did exactly what I wanted to do. Later in life, I called my father and I says, you know, Dad, I've made it. This is it. Now I'm economically independent and I've made it. I never thanked him, though, because he never told me why he did it. He told me many, many, many years afterwards because he wanted to make sure 
knowing me very deeply that I was going to make it and I was going to be able to go through every failure in the world. So I define myself as somebody permanently motivated. I don't need to go to anybody to get motivated. I motivate myself. Now, that motivation has been changing through the years. It used to be one thing and then it became another thing and then later on in life it became something else. But I did not depend on anybody except my faith and whatever that created in me that motivated me to go ahead and succeed. So if you want to find out what I've done, all you have to do is go into my LinkedIn profile. It's all there. I don't want to bore you with my resume. I'm pretty sure you guys have one more exciting than me. But it's all in there. All the information is in there. Companies are up there. You can check them out too. And that is me, somebody who's persevered, who's not going to quit till he succeeded. Well, other people and other companies ask, what is my biggest weakness? My biggest weakness is pretty simple. I am very hard at delegating things to people. It took me many, many, many years to be able to delegate and make sure that things were done the way I wanted it. But then I learned. I learned how to form teams and mentor teams and minister and manage teams. And it has become the best part of my life. It has become that sharing my knowledge and teaching others how to do the same things I've done is more satisfying than actually doing them. So yes, I have a weakness, uh, you know, much of, of a resume I might have and might impress one or two out there. Yes, we all have weaknesses. And that, I think, would be my biggest. Is I am very hard to delegate. It took me 10 years, maybe 15 years to learn. And I finally learned how to build a team that helped me. And it was very satisfying. Others ask, what do you think is your biggest achievement? Well, my biggest achievement was I was able to balance my business and my family life. Unless things in, at home are working, your business ain't going to work. Or at least it's not going to work as well. Now, you might have a business that works pretty well, but then you might have a family that's not working at all. Or on the contrary, you might have a great family, but then you can't go into business or do anything, absolutely nothing. So I think my biggest achievement after many trials and failures was to balance my family and my business life. You see, it is important that you become somebody important in your home as well as your business. If you're a CEO and you're very cherished in your business, you must be a good husband, a good father, a good brother and a good sister and be cherished in your family. That is extremely important. That is the foundation of everything a businessman does. If you're successful in your family, you're going to be successful in your business. If you follow principles with your family, those same principles you take to your business. And if you're successful in your family, you will be successful in your business. Until you do that, success in your business is not going to come. I'm sorry to tell you, but you'll have to sacrifice one of the two. That's what most people have to do. In my case, I was blessed enough to be able to balance family and business life. And I think that is quite an achievement, to be honest with you. Others ask me, what is the biggest project you have done? What is the biggest thing you have done? What is the biggest thing you have accomplished? Well, in my case, the biggest thing I have accomplished is one that very few can accomplish. Going international was basically the toughest thing I have ever encountered. And here's the reason why. Most people you go to that are around you and your business and your family, your friends or loved ones will tell you not to do it. Here's what they'll tell you. You're not ready yet. Second thing is you don't have the money. And the third thing is you don't have the experience. So the toughest thing is not to go out there and become international. That you can do. The toughest thing is you beating all that wrong advice because it comes from people you love. In fact, when you analyze that, with pretty sharp mind, you, you say to yourself, it's a very high risk. I'm not sure I'm willing to take it. But go ahead and take it. If you know your gift, if you have faith, and if you are prepared, go ahead and take it. I took that leap in 1990. Now, I've worked in over 30 cities in five different continents, have opened businesses, and failed and succeeded in many of them. Out of the balance it would be, it's a positive balance. I sold most of my businesses in 2018, just kept the foundation, which I am a CEO of that foundation today. So to be honest with you, 
Being international is the toughest thing I've ever faced. Most people don't want to do it. Most people think they can't do it. But to be honest with you, if you want to do it, it's something you should try. Some of the people have asked me, well, what is your biggest strength? I think my biggest strength is team formation. Business development would be another one and basically perseverance. I think if you combine all those and you show people what you can do, even better, if you teach people what you can do, if you mentor people and what you can do, there's going to be a lot of people around you very happy, learning from your success and even being more successful than you. Who cares? A business developer is somebody who takes a business from zero and gets it up to 10. You develop the business all the way through success. So I would think that that would be my biggest strength, being a business developer. Some people also ask me, what is my style of management? Well, my style of management is very simple. I like to put people where they work the best in what they like and specialize people in that certain point. I want to make sure that they like it. I want to make sure that they have a gift to be there. And I want to make sure that they're happy where they are. You see, it's like the car manufacturers. They make a car, it's a long line, and it goes through a lot of different people. Each one has a specific job. It's actually a pretty successful way of managing. Hey, I compare that to the car companies and the way they run their assembly lines. Everybody specializes in one area of the car. And at the end, what you see as a result of that assembly line, it's a beautiful make automobile. Beautiful. Why? Because these people specialize in every spot of the car. There's one guy specialized for every spot you need. And the result of that is a pretty well-formed machine. So th that is my style of management. I like to put people into what they like. I like to have them specialized in that area if they have a gift for that area. And I like to make them work happy and make sure that they make enough money so they can, you know, save and pay for their bills and be comfortable with the work they do. You know, some of the questions and offers that I've had, people ask me, would you go sideways on your career? Of course I wouldn't. You know, in this days and times and ages, we've been hit by the biggest crisis in this century. I think our knowledge and our experience has to be worth a lot more now than ever. I think wherever we are required as CEOs or business people or entrepreneurs, we should go. We should help. We should help people get up again. We should help people be faithful. We should help people trust themselves. Some people have asked me, what is my day-to-day -day routine? Well, I'll tell you. It is pretty simple. Um, I wake up every morning around 5 o'clock, 5 a.m. in the morning. Why, I don't know. Even Saturdays and Sundays. I got used to it, so I wake up early. The first thing I do is I pray. I pray for a while because, you know, knowing God is something that's changed my life so much. And it gives me the strength, really gives me the strength to face whatever is coming. Even though these days is pretty simple compared to many, many years ago. The second thing I do is, you know, I plan my day. You need to plan your day. You can't just go out there and think, you know, am I going to take a right? Am I going to take a left? I plan my day. I have some meetings. I have some calls. Well, the meetings now are all in it. So I plan my day. I make a plan that there's enough time for me to go do business and make money. There's enough time for my foundation, which is a nonprofit, so I can dedicate time for my foundation. And there's also enough time to maybe go pick up my daughter at school. So maybe go have some dinner with my family. And again, today it's a little different, uh, but that's my routine for many, many years before. It's changed a bit with this crisis that we're going through now. It's pretty common. All you have to do is have a plan. Always have a plan. I'm not talking about a plan for 10 years from now. I'm talking about a weekly, daily, maybe monthly plan. You see, you accomplish big things by accomplishing small ones. Don't try and score a goal all the way from the other side of the field. You see, it's like football. You go yard by yard. When you're close enough, then go ahead and score that goal. Now, some of the people have asked me, what am I passionate about? I'll tell you what I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about succeeding and teaching people how to do it. And I'm passionate about God. About succeeding and teaching people is very simple. I've done that all my life. But that's what I like. I know how to do it well. I have accomplished most of what I set it out to do. So I'm really passionate about success. The second thing I'm most passionate about is God. You know, since that day, God spoke to me for the first time. 
Everything in my life has changed. I really hope that it does the same thing with you. If you believe it or not, it doesn't matter. I didn't believe it anyways, but he spoke to me. I can tell you I'm a man of faith. Everything I do is sustained by faith. Everything I wait for and hope is also sustained by faith. So God has been a huge, huge help in my life. It's been a huge, huge motivation, and even better, a huge example for my life. How do I deal with pressure? Well, very simple. The first thing I do is through prayer. I feel that through prayer, most of my pressure is manageable. The second thing is how I deal with pressure is basically just doing it and persevering. Everything is pressure in our lives. It has become a constant thing in our lives. From when the days when my father used to tell me everything is mine, to the days when I had to go international and say, should I face this with my own money and go broke, or do I go to a bank and borrow somebody else's money? Well, I decided to do it with my own money and God was good. So there's pressure in life in everything you do. In my case, the way I deal with pressure is prayer and perseverance. If you believe you're going to make it, if you have a plan, if you have a goal, and if you have faith, please don't doubt it a minute. You are going to make it. So just to summarize most of the things we've talked about, is basically, you know, I'm a CEO. I've been doing business for a couple of decades. I've done it all over the world in many areas, transportation. I became a book author. I also did business on franchising. I'm a manufacturer. I manufacture sportswear, or I used to manufacture sportswear in China. I've been in the car business. I've been in the financial. I've been in the investment banking business. I've also been in many other businesses which dealt with wholesale, international wholesale and retail, the supply chain, the logistics. So again, the reason I wanted to do this video is for you to know me a little better. You know, I want to make my information accessible to anybody who wants to go and see if I've done what I've said I've done. I wanted you to make sure that you can trust me when I say I can help you succeed, survive, or even thrive because I've done it myself. I wanted to make sure that you understand that anybody who embarks on a trip to go help others must first have helped himself. I call it very simply walk to walk and talk to talk. I think that's the most important thing to do. I might be a good salesman, but I, what I try to sell today is knowledge and education. I've sold all my life and everybody sells. Now in today's world, that's not a problem. You can go out there and sell whatever you want. You can go out there and trade whatever you want. You don't even need to be successful. On it. But when you're trying to educate people and give people advice, there is a delicate spot. You better be saying something that you have done before. I think people would trust you enough, or even better, if they knew you did it, if they knew everything that came out of your mouth came because you tried and failed so many times, but fail until you succeeded. And that's my case. My case is I'm what they call a working CEO. I work from the bottom up all the way to CEO. I learned every position in the company. I've done every position in the company. So when you tell me about a problem downstream, can't lie to me because I've done it. I've been there. I've failed and I've succeeded in that same spot. So you got to be a pretty good storyteller to fool me. The only reason, am I more intelligent? No. Am I special? No. I just did it. I did it before you. So at this point in your life, when the world is in crisis, make sure you pick the right person to guide you. Guru, teacher, motivator, pastor, or religious leader. It doesn't matter. Make sure you pick the right one, though. The one who's giving you advice out of being able to solve that beforehand. There's a lot of good salesmen out there. They'll sell you air. But that's not what we want to talk about, and we don't care. God bless them. I'm just saying for your own benefit, make sure that if somebody is telling you, I can help you. I can show you the right way to go. Has done it before. It's a very simple principle. And I think it's the best way to acquire knowledge and education from somebody who's done it before you. I can't even tell you how many times I just wanted to quit. I fell so many times. 
I thought so many times, should I do this? I felt so many times that I thought I was going the wrong way. But that's what God plays a very important part in your life. Because just a little voice inside of me said, you are going the right way. Have faith. Keep doing it because you'll get there. We will never know why. He makes us go whatever he makes us go. But I can tell you that if you have that communication, if you have a gift of perseverance, and if you believe in yourself and have a very strong will to do things, you will succeed. You don't need to be an important person. You don't need to be even a special person. All you need to be is faithful, sure about your own gift, and brave enough to persevere against anything that comes your way. And you will see it happen. That is the way you see most of the big businessmen being formed. They came out of nowhere. They actually had no previous experience. They started in a garage, a basement, an attic. I don't care, somewhere, small, little, and enclosed. And then today, they're the biggest business people in the world. Now, why am I saying this? Because I have done it. And believe me, I'm nothing special. But I had the thing inside of me that took me to where I am today. I knew my gift. I knew exactly what I was good at. I was motivated myself. I motivated myself. And I'm not saying I'm standing in a mirror talking to myself all the time. Motivation just comes from a desire in life. If you have a strong will and high self-esteem, you will make it. You will get there. It doesn't matter what obstacles you have to jump, you will make it. And I know that because, again, I did it. So I just want to make you understand that there's an opportunity out there for you. Find what you like. Find what your gift is and go follow it with all your heart. It'll happen. I'm sure of that. In conclusion, I must tell you that I am a multitask, multinational CEO. That's what I do today. That's what I've done for the past decades. I've achieved some measure of success because I really wanted it in my heart. At the beginning, I just wanted to show my father I could do it. At the end, I just wanted to show myself I could do it. I started business administration and financial management, which helped me a lot. But where I learned the most was failing and succeeding, failing and succeeding. What a great school that is. Was I fearful? At times. Was I thinking of quitting? At times. But thanks God I didn't, because what I do now is I tell people, you can do it. Out of me, done it before. Out of me, doing it before. I like, I enjoy, that's my passion. My passion is showing you people how to get up there and do it. Don't let anybody discourage you. Don't let anything in life discourage you. Because the only ones who make it are the ones who want to live. The other ones, like I've said before, just want to exist. Don't worry about them. They'll be okay. If you want to live, succeed, and make it, just do what others don't do. That is a basic point, too, of success. Do what others don't do. If you do what others don't do, if you wake up before everybody and you go to bed after everybody, if you spend three hours acquiring knowledge for yourself instead of watching a game, if you spend a little more time with your family instead of long hours at the office, do something most people don't do. If you do something most people don't do, you will end up where most people do not end up. At the end, I just want to say that for those of you that are offended by the mask, I deeply apologize. I'm deeply sorry that you uh, are offended. You know, my face is on my LinkedIn account, and most of my businesses have my face, so go ahead and see it. For now, please stay safe. When you go to work or when you want to go to work, stay safe. All the time, stay safe. When you want to go enjoy and play around and enjoy a game or maybe a movie, stay safe. Remember, this is temporary. All this will pass, and we will become winners. Remember one thing and never forget it. God is on our side. Thank you.